Hi everyone, today let's watch Damsel, the 2024 Netflix movie starring Millie Bobby Brown. Elodie is a princess of a kingdom in a faraway land to the north. One day, Lord Bayford, Elodie's father, receives a proposal letter from the kingdom of Aurea asking for Elodie's hand in marriage. Elodie is hesitant to marry someone she has never met, but Lord Bayford explains that they need this union in order to receive aid for their cold, barren land and save their hungry people. Out of love for their people, Elodie and her family set sail to meet her fiancé. Soon, they arrive at the beautiful kingdom of Orea. Lord and Lady Bayford are amazed by the abundance of natural resources and gasp at the sight of the magnificent castle. While everyone else is thrilled by the grandeur of their surroundings, Elodie seems to not care as much about the abundance or wealth and tells her family that she cares more about whether her fiancé is kind and well-read. While taking a rest in her chamber, Elodie walks out onto the balcony and sees another lady in a tower nearby. They exchange smiles, and the lady goes inside shortly. At night, Elodie walks out onto the balcony again, but does not see the lady from earlier. Instead, she sees some torches on a mountain in the distance and wonders what that is. Floria then enters her room. Sensing Elodie's uneasiness, Floria assures her that everything will be fine. Next morning, Elodie is greeted by Queen Isabel, King Roderick, and Prince Henry of Kingdom Aurea. They exchange pleasantries briefly, and Queen Isabel suggests that the young couple should spend some time getting to know each other while the adults discuss their wedding details. Henry and Elodie take a walk in the garden, Initially, it seems that Henry is uninterested. However, when Elodie begins asking him how he feels about her, Henry is surprised by her directness and starts growing fond of her. Meanwhile, Queen Isabel and Lord Bayford conclude their discussion on the wedding. They were discussing a good dowry for Elodie, but Lord Bayford acts strangely when asked about it by Lady Bayford, Elodie's stepmother. Elodie asks Henry about the torches she saw the previous night. Henry explains that it is an ancient ceremony that honors the ancestors. The day before the wedding, we see Queen Isabel decorating the castle. Lady Bayford approaches, hoping to connect and maintain a good relationship with the queen, seeing that they are about to be family. To her surprise, the queen reminds her not to forget her station and that this marriage is simply a transaction. The queen even forgets Elodie's name and calls her Eloise instead. This unsettles Lady Bayford, so she approaches Elodie at night in her chamber and shares her concerns with her, warning her not to go through with the wedding. Lord Bayford appears afterwards but says nothing about canceling the wedding. Fully trusting her father's decision, Elodie does not take her stepmother's advice. On the day of the wedding, Elodie gets dressed up with much excitement. She and Prince Henry have a small, intimate wedding. She says goodbye to her family and looks forward to her new life as she steps onto the carriage. Elodie asks Henry where they are heading, and he explains that they are going to pay respect to their ancestors on the mountain. Upon arriving, Elodie sees Queen Isabel, with a small group of people with their faces covered by masks. The queen puts a coin in Elodie's hand and begins sharing the story of their kingdom, which was founded by the first king who had to sacrifice his three daughters to please the bloodthirsty, monstrous creature hiding in the mountain. The queen cuts the hands of Henry and Elodie, joining their blood, and proclaims that Elodie is now royalty, part of their bloodline, and a princess of Aurea. She tells Elodie to toss the coin into the chasm, and she obliges, thinking that all of this is just part of a symbolic ceremony. The queen announces that the ceremony has ended. Henry tells Elodie that, according to tradition, he should walk back to the castle while carrying Elodie with both arms and asks her to close her eyes. While Elodie immerses herself in bliss and happiness, Prince Henry whispers, Sorry, and throws her off into the chasm, causing her to lose consciousness. Moments later, Elodie wakes up and begins shouting for help. However, her shouting awakens the creature. Elodie tries to climb up but has no success as the walls are slippery. She looks around and sees many jewels, realizing that she has been sacrificed to the creature. Suddenly, she sees a bunch of birds on fire flying towards her. Filled with fear, she begins praying to her mother. To her surprise, she hears a voice coming from the stones, 
and soon realizes that it is the dragon. The dragon reminds her of the ancient sacrificial promise that was made by the royalties of Aria, and that she can smell the royal blood on her. Elodie then realizes that this is why the queen had cut her hand, so the dragon could easily locate her. Elodie runs for her life and manages to hide in a cave to avoid the dragon's fire. In a cave, she sees the body of the lady she had seen a few days ago from her room balcony. In her horrid state, she finds a tunnel and crawls inside. She catches a momentary break and lights up her pendant using a small fire next to her. Moving forward, she sees something glowing ahead but stops at a cliff. With much frustration, she throws the prince's ring away and runs towards the lit-up area ahead of her, jumping over the cliff. Though she almost falls, she manages to hang on using a dagger she found in her dress. Elodie heads toward the glowing area and finds that they are insects. She collects the glowing insects with a piece of cloth and uses them to light her way ahead. She also finds a written note on the wall stating that this area is safe from the dragon. However, she turns around and sees several human skeletons on the ground and different girls' names on the wall. She knows that if she does not find a way out, she will eventually starve to death here. She takes a brief nap and wakes up to find the glowing insects crawling all over her legs. Surprisingly, the insects have healing properties and have healed her earlier wound. Elodie also finds a map drawn on the wall. The map shows that there is a crystal somewhere in the tunnels that would help her identify the exit. With hope in mind, she makes her way to the exit. After a few turns, she finds crystals growing on the wall with the exit on top and a crown next to it. Seeing the crown, Elodie feels a surge of hope. She wraps cloth around her hands and feet and uses the crown to climb up. After successfully climbing up the hole, the scene that awaits her is the cliff, hundreds of meters away from the ground. Feeling hopeless, she begins screaming for help, but no one can hear her. Suddenly, the dragon shows up and is about to breathe fire into the hole. Surprisingly, she hears a loud shout that also attracts the dragon's attention. Turns out, Elodie's father had already heard from the queen that she would be sacrificed. Even though he had accepted the terms, he could not let his daughter die and decides to save her. Elodie climbs down the crystal hole and finds the dragon's nest. In the dragon's nest, she sees three skeletons of baby dragons and realizes what had happened. When the founding king had entered the dragon's cave centuries ago, he ordered his knights to brutally kill the dragon's babies. The enraged mother dragon took the lives of all the knights, and the king, fearful for his own life, began begging for mercy. The dragon demanded him to sacrifice three princesses every year, which is the origin of the ancestral sacrifice. Back to present day, Lord Bayford begins calling for Elodie and is found by the dragon. After killing two men, the dragon goes for Lord Bayford. Lord Bayford explains the reason behind his visit, and the dragon does not kill him right away. Instead, she pins him down and asks him to summon Elodie from hiding. Lord Bayford shouts to Elodie, telling her not to come out, which enrages the dragon and she pierces him with claws. At the same time, another man from Lord Bayford's group kicks over a stone, and the dragon flies over to investigate. Elodie takes this opportunity to approach her father. Lord Bayford apologizes sincerely, begging for her forgiveness, and tells her that her stepmother and sister are waiting for her by the harbor on the boat. He passes away shortly after. Before the dragon returns, Elodie finds a rope and begins climbing, successfully escaping from the dragon to the ground. On the ground, she finds a horse but decides to abandon it and hides behind a stone pile. Enraged, the dragon begins breathing fire into the sky after losing her prey. The next day, Elodie comes out from the stone pile and runs into her stepmother, who tells her that the queen has taken Floria to take her place. Without any hesitation, Elodie gets on a horse and begins running back towards the dragon's cave. She climbs into the cave using a rope, makes an illuminating pouch using the glowing insects, creates a simple device to attract the dragon, and takes her father's sword, ready to rescue her sister. Soon, the device she made triggers and gets the dragon's attention. She runs towards her sister and tells her to hide. The dragon returns, looking for her prey, and finds Elodie standing there with her sword. Elodie explains to the dragon that she is not the descendant of the king who killed her children, but the dragon does not believe her. Just as the dragon breathes fire onto her, Elodie also swings her sword and injures the dragon. 
She attempts to retrieve the sword again, but is pinned down by the dragon, who digs her claw into Elodie's body. She takes out a dagger and pokes into the dragon's eyes. In great pain, the dragon throws her out, and Elodie uses the sword next to her to attack the dragon. Elodie quickly realizes that the sword cannot kill the dragon. This is when she notices that the wind created by the dragon, when flowing through the cave, bends around the stone pillars, forming countercurrents inside the cave. Inspired by what she sees, Elodie purposely enrages the dragon, causing the dragon to breathe fire and dodges away before the fire can reach her. The countercurrent causes the fire to flow back to the dragon, burning her badly. Taking this opportunity, Elodie explains once again, showing her wound on her hand, that she really isn't the descendant of the Aurea royalty. Right when the dragon thinks that Elodie is about to end her life with the sword, Elodie does not do so. To her surprise, Elodie heals the dragon's wound with the glowing insects and brings her to take revenge on the royal family of Aurea. Elodie appears in the castle, witnessing another wedding commencing. She warns the bride to quickly escape. The queen berates her, thinking that Elodie would not be a match for them. This is when the dragon appears in the sky and sets the whole castle on fire, destroying the entire Aurea royal family. In the end, Elodie leaves Aurea with her family, bringing the dragon with her to save her people from harsh winters. This movie champions feminism and showcases the power of women. Elodie emerges as a strong and resilient protagonist, defying societal expectations and challenging the traditional roles assigned to princesses. Throughout her journey, she demonstrates intelligence, bravery, and resourcefulness, proving that women are capable of extraordinary feats. Moreover, the film highlights the importance of solidarity among women, as Elodie forms alliances with her stepmother and ultimately joins forces with the dragon to bring about justice. By portraying women as agents of change and emphasizing their inherent strength, this movie serves as a powerful reminder of the significance of women's empowerment and the immense potential they possess. It stands as a celebration of womanhood and a call to recognize and harness the power of women in shaping their own destinies. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe for more.